What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's good to be here with you. As the title implies, today we are gonna be taking another look at the Tune Tracks Easy Drummer 3 drum sampling software. Now, this is gonna be a part two from our last video that we did on that, which was showing you guys how to get your drum tracks out of the plugin, imported into your sessions and whatever DAW you're using in WAV files. Now, one of the limitations of how I showed you how to do it last time was that you could only import four stereo tracks, eight total mono tracks, but they were set up on stereo, so you had to kind of move things around or get, get creative with it. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you're gonna get those tracks, all of the tracks, as many of them as you want, in mono, in your session, right now. Now, if you're new to this channel, as I always do, I wanna invite you, one, to check out some of the other videos we have on here. I've got about, I think this is my 50th video, and there's a lot of different stuff we cover as it relates to DIY home studio stuff and processes on how we write great songs, how we stay focused, how we stay dialed in and juggle careers, family, all those things with our passions and things that really fuel us and make us our best selves. We talk a lot about that kind of stuff. Check those videos out if you like those videos. If you like what I got going on here, I wanna invite you to hit that subscribe button, turn your notifications on so you get notified when the videos come out. And as I always ask, drop me a comment. I'd love to know where you're at in the world, where you're at on your musical journey, and a little something about yourself. What drew you to this channel? All right, we are gonna get back here at the desk, pull this session up, and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to get your drum tracks just the way you want them in your session. Let's get it. So the first thing that we're gonna want to do is pull up a session. I've got this session pulled up. This is uh, Runaway is the name of the song. Pull up Easy Drummer. I'm gonna skip over all of the uh, intro to Easy Drummer, giving you the lay of the land. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're trying to troubleshoot how to get all of these drum tracks into mono tracks where they need to be and stereo tracks within your session. And uh, if you're looking for something that's more of a beginner kind of walkthrough of this plugin and another way to, uh, to get these, these, uh, these drum tracks into WAV files within your session, I'm going to link these in the description below. There's two great videos. Right now we are going to be looking at uh, some very specific things. So let's dig in here. As we're looking at this mixer tab, you can see it's gonna vary based on which expansion pack that you're using uh, with Easy Drummer 3. Uh, it's gonna vary how many inputs you're gonna have, what drums are gonna be a part of the kit, how things are close mics. So you can see these, uh, these ambient mics, ambient mics. Um, and that's how we're gonna get a room sound with the tape emulation here. You got compression, plate reverb, and then all the drums. A total of 13 tracks, that's nine mono tracks and four stereo tracks. So the first thing that we're going to wanna to do, I've already done this, but you need to go into your session. You need to create nine mono tracks and you need to create four stereo tracks or however many tracks you have in your mixer in Easy Drummer 3. That's gonna be your first step. The next thing you're going to do is take a look at how the outputs are routed within your mixer. They're gonna to default to everything is going to route to outputs one and two. Uh, these are all going to be listed as stereo outputs. You'll want to start from three and four and move down from there. I'll explain that in a minute once we get into the DAW. Think about this, you got stereo outputs three and four is two mono outputs mono three mono four left right that's all you're going to do so you can set these how you need so the kick is mono so i've got it going to outputs three and four you can see i also have the hi-hats going to outputs three and four so i'll do kick output three left hi-hat output four right hopefully that makes sense it'll make sense in a minute when we get into the doll I've got the uh, snare top and bottom going to five and six. I've got the rack tom and floor tom going to seven and eight. I've got um, the overheads going to nine and 10. They are a stereo pair. And then you have the ambient 
uh, mics are all mono. I have them going to 11 and 12, 13, 14, and then you got tape, comp, plate, all set to their own stereo outputs. You can see this. Okay, uh, a couple of uh, pro tips. If you have toms in here, they're already gonna be panned based on how they had them in the room. I would go hit option and just center those so that when they print to the mix, they print to the center. And once you get them in your session, you can go in and adjust the panning however you want and you aren't having to be married to exactly how it was an easy drummer. All right, that is the first pro tip that I'm going to give you. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is come into the DAW and we are just gonna select all of these tracks. And you can see it goes, I have them all listed. I would just list them exactly as you see them uh, in the plugin just to make things easy to follow. And uh, you can see I have all of them chosen. We're gonna shift click for all of those. As you can see, this is a playlist, 0.01. I've already done this, but I wanted to give us a, a playlist. Another pro tip while you're doing this, if you have any uh, master bus or mix bus processing on your session, I would go through and disable all of that so it's not impacting the tracking as you are recording. But what you're going to do is go up to the kick and you're going to look at the corresponding outputs of each one of these tracks. Depending on what DAW you're using, this is going to vary. But when you go into your uh, your input section on whichever your DAW is, you're going to look for plug-in inputs. And you'll see Easy Drummers right there. And as you can see, each one of these has a left and a right. And you're just gonna go through and make sure they're corresponding to what you have in here, set those up. And this is gonna be real easy once you do that. So we're not gonna change anything there because I already have it set up. And then all you're going to do from that point is you are going to record enable all these tracks. You wanna make sure they're all armed. All right, so you can see the comp and the plate reverb were not. And once we have that, we are off to the races. So let's talk through what's gonna happen here. The uh, audio from the drum samples are going to route to these inputs that you have in your DAW that are mono, are gonna decide left or right, and you are going to get all of that tracked straight into your session as if it was being recorded live in front of you. And then once you have that, you're gonna click save and then you're gonna go in there, you're gonna be able to go in there and manipulate every single input track. So you can use compressions, you can use tape emulation, saturation, all kind of post-processing that's gonna really make these drums come to life and sit in your mix of your song much better than they might be when they're just hosted within the plugin. All right, so let's take a look, here we go. So we're gonna choose here, just create a region to record. As you can see, this is tracking just the same way that you would print a mix. It's printing this to the session. It's gonna enable me to go back and make uh, adjustments to every single aspect of what's already existing within the plugin. And I'll be able to print mixes from this and uh, treat these as if they were live recorded drums and process them accordingly. What's up? Trying to relearn these parts. You make these demos for these songs, you get to them, you're like, oh yeah, what was that part again? Well, slide guitar. That's gonna be the end of the video. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys to sort out exactly how to get these tracks into your sessions, the most appropriate way for you if the, uh, the other way of doing the stereo tracks works better. Again, I'm gonna link these videos for the uh, full Easy Drummer 3 walkthrough. That'll be linked in the description below and the um, the part one to this where I go through the uh, process of getting the stereo tracks into your sessions, it'll be either on the left or the right at the end of this video. I also wanted to say that I am on Instagram and Facebook and would love to connect with you guys there. I'll link those as well in the description below as well as a, uh, a link to my website. If you're new here once again and you made it to the end of this video, I just wanna encourage you to look around, check out some of the other videos. And if you dig what you see, consider hitting that subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you get notified when these videos come out. If you have any questions at all on any of this Easy Drummer stuff, if there's other videos related to Easy Drummer or anything else that you'd like to see me do, drop me a comment and let me know. 
Uh, and that's going to do it for me today. I'm Justin Brogdon. You guys keep doing what you do. Keep doubling down on your dreams. Keep making great music. Keep believing in yourselves. And I'm going to be seeing you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>